everyone and good afternoon. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of NetApp Insight 2024. I'm Rebecca Knight, your host, sitting alongside my co-host, co-analyst, Rob Strecce. Rob, we're in the home stretch. It's our penultimate segment. My head, I'm dizzy from in intelligent data infrastructure, AI solutions, so much. I, I think we may have some more of that <laughs> to go through, and I, again, I'm, I'm excited about this. I know both companies, obviously I know NetApp and Anaplan I know as well, but I, I'm looking forward to digging into this and how it really helps build that product out. Spoiler well. alert, okay, yes. so let's welcome our next guest to the show, Adam Thier, he is the Chief Product and Technology Officer at Anaplan, thank you so Hello. much for coming on theCUBE, and Cesar Sunuda, uh, President of NetApp, thank you so much for coming back on theCUBE. Great pleasure to be here. Always. Thank you for being so here. So much fun to see you. So Adam, I want to start with you. Why I, know, I know Rob is familiar with Anaplan, but for our viewers who are not in the know, tell us a little bit about Anaplan and how you use NetApp. Okay, so Anaplan is the leading SaaS provider of planning solutions. Now, most people think that's like finance and budgeting, but we run some of the world's largest supply chains. We do the workforce planning for some of the world's largest company, hundreds of thousands of employees. We do sales performance, territory and quota management. Um, there are over 2,400 different use cases people use Anaplan for, um, ranging from you know, doing the budget to deciding what goes on a plane from China tonight to all the DCs around the world and from the DCs that night to every retail location around the world. So uh, about a billion dollars, um, very complex, very large infrastructure. Um, at any given moment, we have a million customer databases in memory in production. Wow. wow. That's a lot. You are describing something that is exceedingly complex. So how do you use NetApp to help streamline your operations? So, you know, we, we've used NetApp on and off. We had it in GCP and AWS. And like all companies, we grow, right? You know, and we got big. And now we're really complicated. We have our own data centers. We have our own um, Amazon instances, GCP instances, all over the world, like everywhere and you couldn't see them all, right? We have petabytes and petabytes of storage. We have customers with 200 terabytes of models in memory, and then, uh, and we just had a mishmash of storage and looking at it, and it's like, where's this customer? And somebody would go, and the, we put an end to that with NetApp, is what we did. So now we, we're in the process of having a single view globally of all our storage, it facilitates disaster recovery, it facilitates our customer movement, right? We want to move them around, data residency, and you know, and then the big one coming up that we're really focused on is, um, is um, ransomware. Yeah. Right? I, I can imagine with that, that much data for, yeah. and sensitive data to customers and what they would look at is their intellectual property, yeah. I'm sure. But you're also, you, you know, going down the path of AI and, of and embedding AI in your product yeah. and how does really what NetApp brings to bear helping you with that? Well, again, now the customer's data I can't touch for AI, but all the master data around the models and, and all that stuff is invaluable. But I can't use it if I can't get to it. And that's where NetApp is, is key and that's for my own um, use for my customers. The, the conversational AI we're building, the early warning, you know, anomaly detection, the uh, model building co-pilots help people build their implementations easier. That's all coming out of that. And again, if I've got stuff over here and I got stuff over here, I, ca I can't do a good job unless I can see it all and work with it all. Um, on the other side, again, um, securing that data, right? That, that's the other, and that's, as much as the feature functionality is really critical to me, not losing my estate <laughs> is more critical. Yeah. So. Not going down, yes. Yeah. Going down when you're in the SaaS business, that's a no-no. Yeah. So how, how do you see these challenges, because you see obviously across NetApp, how do these challenges play out for others as well? And, and what are you seeing as those challenges? So, well, first of all, I want to say thank you for your trust. You're welcome. And I think you have answered probably already my, you know, my question that I'm getting. <laughs> but um, there's no doubt that we live in a new era. The era of intelligence and data, data and intelligence. Yeah. 
And, and that has put new opportunities, but at the same time, new challenges, right? So the growth of data has been exponential the last years. So the amount of data that you're talking about, yeah. how things have changed, is something that is a top of mind for you in your company, but many companies. How do you embrace AI? How do you embrace AI in a way that you can protect your data, that is secure, but at the same time that you have the reliability, the performance of your data, that's probably the biggest challenge that every CIO, and I will say every CEO in any organization is facing today. So Adam, how, what are some of the tangible business results that you've seen as a result of working with NetApp, and as you've said, simplifying and streamlining your operations? So I think simplifying <laughs> is, is the key benefit right now. Um, before it was a lot of people, a lot of places, a lot of, you know, pager duty goes off, I'm looking at pager <laughs> duty, and you know, people ask me what keeps me up at night. It's pager duty keeps me <laughs> up at night. And, um, but just being able to have that, that kind of seamless view has been so enabling to us. Um, and, and when you and say just, enabling, is it that it gives you more time, that it gives you more peace of mind, that it gives you... More time, more peace of mind, a faster ability to react to, to things that are going on. Much reduced, right, we're expanding constantly. We'll add hundreds of millions of dollars of customer this year, right? So every year it's, it's a huge amount of new customer models that come in and expanding it and finding the room and that, I mean, that was, you know, we got planning models, so we know how to plan for it, but now being able to actually connect the plan to the execution through NetApp has been key. It's just, it's simpler, it's cleaner, it's easier, fewer mistakes, fewer tragedies, right? If, you know, if, you know, you know, you know, wait, thousands of lives saved in the process, if you will. So. Yeah, yeah. And including your own. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and because you don't have your, your uh, pager duty phone thrown at you in right, the middle of the yeah. night, which been there, been on the ops side, and I've had that happen. I, I mean, over the past year, since the last insight, things have changed at a radical speed, I would say, and the challenge is, and the approach is, I mean, you think back, it's been only two years, really, since ChatGPT took off and we got into this. How are you seeing NetApp really stepping up that roadmap? I, I, you know, intelligent data infrastructure was really rolled out last year as kind of a vision. And this year it's kind of paying out. How do you see that playing with the customers that you're talking to and people like Anaplan? Well, I think, it, first of all, is key to listen to customers. I think Adam here is, you, know, you guys are sharing clearly and openly, hey, what are your pain points? What are the things that you need? And we have a big role. I mean, look, we, there's plenty of data that lives on NetApp, right? And we have a big responsibility towards our customers. Our vision on intelligent data infrastructure was not just a response of those customer needs, but a reality of what's happening in the world. In a way, what our customers are asking us for is to have a unified storage you know, plan yeah. where they can embrace public cloud, multi-cloud, the world of on-premise, right? With a single engine, and in our case what we're bringing is single operating system which is on top, but at the same time, what you want to have that unified storage is to make sure that you can run you know, intelligent data services. Yep. A big part of our commitment as NetApp is to provide some of those intelligent data services to help you work with your storage. And all that with a commitment of saying, you know, simplicity, security, mm -hmm. savings, sustainability. So that's our real change in the last 12 months. In a way, embracing AI in a way that really can be implemented in our customers, working with them hand to hand. Yeah, yeah and I, I think, again, you hit on a really good topic and you kind of brought it up a little bit that you're not just on-prem, you, you do have on-prem, but you have things in multiple different clouds. Talk to us about how the enablement of ONTAP being that single you know, operating system from a storage perspective has helped you go to those other places. So, so let me make it really simple. Yeah. Separation of duties. It's customer data. Now some of them are doing BYOK, we're doing, but separation of duties. If I got four different systems I'm dealing with, and five different layers, four times five is 20, right? Or I can have four, right? So that reduction, and when you've got 20 and I make mistakes and confusion and there's overlap, 
that's just like a huge thing, just in that small little piece. But you know, separation of duties is no joke. My customers are big, beefy, serious people, right? And um, <laughs> you know, they don't just go, oh, do you, do you have separation of duties, Adam? And I'm like, oh yeah, sure, right? No, they, they push and they test and they, so it just simplifies and it, we avoid the manual errors, the mistakes that end up costing me you know, a fortune, right? And so just having that, and it, it is, it's simplification. As the data explodes and the sources explode and the number of APIs explode and the amount of data coming to and fro, fro and hither and yon increases, it gets beyond the ability of human comprehension fairly quickly. So Caesar, Adam is really emphasizing how this has helped erode his, uh, maybe your headaches, <laughs> because as you said, this is really about a peace of mind, having more security, having a faster reaction time, but it also enables and empowers more innovation to drive business outcomes. So how, how does this, giving him peace of mind, then help him have more time to focus on what the real value adds for the organization? Well, that's a big part of our commitment. He will be better so you to go to say, hey, where he's spending his time that he couldn't spend it before, well, so I'll let Adam answer that, but, this is a big part of our strategy as we think about innovation, right? Saying, what are the biggest pain points? Not just on the technologi technological side, right? So we think about business. Hey, how are you going to go and grow your business so you can go and help your customers in a different way? I want to make sure that we innovate in advance to take care of some of, you know, some of those headaches and some of those key workloads, you know, pains on the infrastructure side. And I'll say uh, beyond storage, when you think about our intelligent that infrastructure, our commitment is beyond storage, right? We embrace security in a way that not anybody else is doing. You know, our ransom work, you know, commitments, you know, and how we go and have those recovery plans and how we bring even Blue XP as a single dashboard to kind of monitor your data mm -hmm. and understand how's your data performing, you having some issues in some places or not, is something unique and a big, differentiator has been, and it is, the fact that we're investing in a truly hybrid cloud world. We're the only company that has, as you have seen them here, the three biggest hyperscalers, right, as a first party service. So we have on top embedded in their consoles. So that's very important for customers because they don't need to go and choose. Hey, do I choose to be on-prem or they choose to be on the cloud? You can go and decide to be in both places and have an interoperability with a seamless experience on your data. And that's what makes us very different. Yeah, it would seem that, again, that where it helps you is, again, trying to, you said, minimize the number of uh, parts, pieces that you have inside of yours, because ultimately this is part of the service that you offer to your to your clients and your customers. So you're trying to have that reliability, secure, security, sustainability has to be a big piece of it because you know, you, you, that costs you money and you're yes. around the world and there's different geographies. Uh, the security, there's sovereignty and things of that nature that you probably have to meet for customers. Yeah. What, what do you see as some of those things that like we heard about the metadata namespace and things of that nature and some of the new new parts that are coming out. Where do you look for NetApp to take you next? Where, where, what are you hoping for? Well, so, um, like I said, we're a billion dollar company. And unlike a lot of my smaller competitors that spend all their money on innovation and building stuff and kind of don't pay a lot of attention to these other things, we have to both build a robust, reliable, secure infrastructure and spend money on that to meet the needs of my really demanding customers and innovate, right? So I have to find the balance. And the balance for us is we need to innovate. Just like NetApp needs to innovate and they've brought out all these new products. We've brought out, in the past year and a half, six new products, data orchestration, uh, you know, geospatial mapping, workflow, and we also brought to market nine new applications in planning and supply chain, workforce, and there. To do those things, do that innovation, I still have to do these things. So being able to simplify those things and being able to be very efficient allows us to open the doors on innovation and outpace my competitors. So they're just trying to catch me on innovation, 
and not doing anything to be secure. Now what I look for next from these guys is, I can't have the estate go down, right? And so what they were doing on AI and security, the, the whole, oh, something's going wrong, snapshot the data, right? This, uh, this is where the future is, and it's going to get uglier and rougher from here. So, you know, that, those are the things I'm looking for. It's the data, right, you know? You know, it's, funny, funny it's, enough, all of the systems run on data, including yeah, AI. Right, right. It's all <laughs> no, that's a core. Yes, right. no, that's a core. But Absolutely. actually, you know, let me jump in. I think, you know, you asked me before about, hey, where do you want, you know, how do you go and spend your time? That's go back to the point you're saying you want to spend more time innovating versus, hey, ensuring that you have the right platform behind right. you. And in my way, that's what I've been spending my time trying to innovate to enable you for right. that growth. Exactly. Right, so when we kind of start years ago innovating and say we're going to be best in class in this world, which is going to be a world of hybrid cloud, and everyone talks about hybrid cloud, but that requires to do the big investments that we have made and the work keep doing with hyperscalers, with yes. NVIDIA, ensuring that we're best in class for our customers so they can differentiate themselves. When do we go and talk about security, we invest in millions of dollars to make sure that our platform, our intelligent that infrastructure that we want you to go and build is secure, and you can really be safe, so you can spend your entire time in other places, right? That's Probably exactly. in the conference you have seen, we've been talking a lot about block storage, right? We made some announcement as well around block. You know, many of our customers have been asking us that, say, we don't want you to be only a file or object right. storage. Well, we had already 20,000 customers on block. The reality, they were asking us for more. So that's our job. Yes. And I love how you have described yours, because in a way, we're doing the same, serving you as you serve your customers. A great note to end on. Caesar and Adam, thank you both so much for coming uh, on theCUBE. A really, really interesting conversation. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you for being here. I'm you. Rebecca Knight for Rob Strecce. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of NetApp Insight 2024. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.